Hello, this is Spidey1958, and welcome to my class review, core classes, for Pathfinder Kingmaker Tips and Options. Uh, this episode, if you couldn't guess from the picture I selected, we're going to do Paladin. Um, so let's get started. And our usual human... Okay. By the way, I just I don't know if you guys noticed, but the picture you choose selects the uh avatar you get. So I sort of like that. And you can always change it, but Okay, Paladin. Paladin serve as beacons for their allies within the chaos of battle. With deadly opponents of evil, they also empower goodly souls to aid in their crusades. Their magic and martial skills also make them well suited to defending others and blessing the fallen within the strength to continue fighting. Uh, Paladins actually have a lot of abilities at the base level and that. And uh, we will go over those. So, first of all, deity selection. Like the cleric, they also need to pick a deity, which um, has to be a deity that has good law followers because Palins have to be good law. And uh, specific alignment, domains, planes, stuff like that. Um, Palin proficiencies. They get all simple and martial weapons and all types of armor and shields except for tower shields. So pretty much similar to the fighter. A paladin who ceases to be lawful good loses all paladin spells and class features. They cannot thereafter gain levels as a paladin until they change their alignment back. So, and that can be a challenge when being a king. So, and that's reflected, I think, pretty well in the game. So, your choices have to be within your alignment. So, it's a challenge. Okay, one of the first abilities you get is as a paladin is smite evil. Once per day, you can call upon the powers of good to aid your struggle against evil as a swift action. So that means you can do it and still attack the same round and do a move. The paladin chooses one target within sight to smite. If this target is evil, the paladin adds their charisma bonus to any attack rolls and adds their paladin level to all damage rolls made against the target of their smite. If the target of the smite evil is an outsider, with the evil subtype, an evil aligned dragon, or an undead creature, the bonus to damage on the first successful attack increases to two points of damage per level the paladin possesses. Regardless of the target, smite evil attacks automatically bypass any DR the creature might possess. So this can be really important at higher levels when fighting extra planar creatures which have high DRs. So. In addition, while Smite Evil is in effect, the Paladin gains a deflection bonus equal to their Charisma modifier, if any, to their armor class against attacks made by the target of the Smite. If the Paladin targets a creature that is not evil, the Smite is wasted with no effect. The Smite remains, effect remains until the target of the Smite is dead or the next time the Paladin rests and regains their use of this ability. At fourth level and every level three levels that are after the paladin may smite evil one additional time per day. So basically even if the tower the, runs away or, or anything until the paladin basically sleeps to reset they get their smite evil against that target. Which is sort of cooler than the old one. I think that makes it more successful and more useful. That so, um, divine grace at second level paladins get a saving throw bonus equal to their charisma bonus on all saving throw bonuses. If you haven't noticed, charisma is very, very important for a uh, paladin. Lay on hands beginning at second level, a paladin can cure wounds her own or those or others by touch each day, can use this ability a number of times equal to half their paladin level plus their charisma modifier. With, with one use of this ability, the pallet can heal 1d6 points of damage for every two paladin levels they possess. Using this ability as a standard action, unless the paladin targets their self, in which case it's a swift action. 
So you can actually heal yourself in combat and still hit, which is an important thing. Often a paladin can use their healing power to deal damage to undead creatures, dealing 1d6 of damage for every two levels the paladin possesses. Using lay on hands in this way requires a successful melee touch attack and does not provoke an attack of opportunity. Undead do not receive a saving throw against this damage. Okay, so at third level, you get Aura Courage. At third level, a is immune to fear. Each ally within 10 feet of them gains plus 4 morale bonus on saving throw against fear effects. This ability functions only when the Paladin is conscious, not if the, the Paladin is dead or is unconscious or dead. Mercy. At third level and every three levels thereafter, a Paladin can select one Mercy. Each Mercy adds an effect to the Paladin's Lay on Hands ability. Whenever the Paladin uses Lay on Hands to heal damage to one target, the target also receives the additional effects from all the Mercies possessed by the Paladin. And I do not know what the actual Mercies are since I've never played a Paladin. But uh, we shall see at some point. Divine Health. At third level, Paladin is immune to all diseases, including supernatural and magical diseases, including mummy rot. And then you basically, at the fourth level, you get another smite, and you get channel positive energy. So you gain the supernatural ability to channel positive energy like a cleric. Using this ability consumes two uses of lay hands, lay on hands ability. This energy can be used to cause or heal damage depending on the creatures targeted. The paladin's channels positive energy, energy and can choose to Deal damage to undead creatures or heal living creatures. Channel positive energy causes a burst that affects all creatures of one type, either undead or living, in a 30-foot radius centered on the paladin. The amount of damage dealt or healed is equal to 1d6 points of damage plus 1d6 points of damage for every two paladin levels beyond first. So 2d6 at 4, 3d6 at 5, so on. Creatures that take damage from channeled energy receive a will save to have the damage. The DC of the save is equal to 10 plus half the Paladin's level plus the Paladin's Charisma modifier. Creatures healed by channel energy cannot exceed their maximum hit points. All excess healing is lost. This is a standard action and does not provoke an attack of opportunity. So if you're wondering in my videos why I use channeling to clear, cure quite often, it's because of that. And since you're almost certainly going to have a charisma higher than 13 you can also select selective channeling as a feat so that you uh, can basically only heal your allies at fifth level you get your divine weapon bond upon reaching fifth level a paladin forms a divine bond with their weapon as a standard action they can call upon the aid of a celestial spirit for one minute per paladin level notice it's one minute not one round at 5th level, the spirit grants the weapon a plus 1 enhancement bonus. For every 3 levels beyond 5th, the weapon gains another plus 1 enhancement bonus to a maximum of plus 6 at 20th level. These bonuses can be added to the weapon, stacking with the existing weapon bonus to a maximum of plus 5. Alternatively, they can be used to add any of the following effects. Axomatic, Brilliant Energy, Defending, Disruption, Flaming, Flaming Burst, Holy, Keen, and Speed. Adding these properties consumes an amount of bonuses equal to the property's cost. These bonuses are added to any properties the weapon already has, but duplicate abilities do not stack. A pallet can use this ability once per day at 5th level and one additional time at day for every 4 levels beyond 5th, a total of 4 times per day at 17th level. So, I mean, that is a great feat, especially when you consider that it's for one minute. Okay, and this basically at uh, eighth level you get plus two bonus. You also get aura resolve. Paladins now immune to charm, spells, and spell like abilities. Each ally within 10 feet of them gains a plus four morale bonus on saving throws against charm effects. The ability functions only when the paladin is conscious, not if they are un unconscious or dead. Excuse me. 
this much talking's hard. I, I didn't, haven't done a video in the last few days because my throat's been really off. At ninth level, you get another Mercy. And at ninth level, you get your first additional use of Divine Weapon Bond. So You're also all this time getting your additional Smite Evils, which is what those are. So then we go to Mark of Justice. At 11 level, 11th level, a paladin can expend two uses of their smite evil ability to grant the ability to smite all smite evil to all allies for one minute using their bonus. As a swift action, the paladin chooses one target within sight to smite. If this target is evil, paladin's allies add their charisma bonus, if any, or the paladin's charisma bonus, if any, to the attack rolls. And add the Paladin's level to all damage rolls made against a target of this of their smite. Smite evil attacks automatically bypass any DR the creature might possess. In addition, while smite evil is in effect, Paladin's allies gain a defect, deflexive bonus equal to their charisma modifier to their AC. To the Paladin's charisma modifier. Against attacks made by the target of this smite. If the, target, if the Paladin targets a creature that is not evil, the smite is wasted and there's no effect. So that's cool. You can give your whole party basically a bonus. And then at 14th level, a Paladin's weapons are treated as good aligned for the purposes of overcoming damage reduction. Any attacks made against an enemy within 10 feet of the Paladin is treated as good aligned for the purposes of overcoming damage reduction. The ability functions only when the Paladin is conscious, not if they are unconscious or dead. 17th level, Aura of Righteousness. At 17th level, Paladin gains DR5 evil and immunity to compulsion spells and spell-like abilities. Each ally within 10 feet gains a plus 4 morale bonus on saving throws against compulsion effects. This ability functions only when the Paladin is conscious, not if they are unconscious or dead. And then the final stuff we have here is the Holy Champion. At 20th level, a Paladin becomes a conduit for the power of good. Their DR increases to 10 evil. See, I'm not sure that's... because that means only evil get past their DR, if I remember right, so I'm not sure why you would want that if you're mostly fighting evil characters, but whatever. And whenever she channels positive energy or uses lay on hands to heal a creature she heals the maximum possible amount so that's the basic paladin as you can see they have lots of abilities there and uh, so let's go on to divine hunter let me pause here a second okay sorry about that I'm back the other thing um, I should mention is that remember paladins get spells too. Uh, they theoretically get zero first level spells at fourth level. Um, which means that if, if they have at least a wisdom of 12, they get spells. But I'm pretty sure they're wisdom for spells because they get cleric spells. So, And they only can get up to, I believe, fourth level spells. So just wanted to make that sure because that doesn't show up here in the spell casting part of it. Okay, Divine Hunter. Most paladins rush into battle, meeting evil toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Divine Hunter prefers to engage enemies from afar, striking down their foes before they can threaten their al her allies. Um, basically, this is the archer version of a paladin. They have mostly the same abilities. They have the smite evil. They have deity selection in that. They have the alignment restriction. However, they do have less armor. They don't get heavy armor. They only get light and medium armor. And they also uh, get precise shot, which basically, even though they don't have the prerequisite for it, precise shot gets rid of the minus four for shooting into combat. So a divine hunter is basically, in some ways, almost a better archer than the rangers, depending on the build you're doing. 
And then they get the same thing at second. They get divine grace and their lay on hands. They get the the mercy at third along with the divine health. and But they also get shared precision at third level when the divine hunter hits a creature with a ranged attack. She grants her allies within 10 feet of her the benefit of precise shot feet against the target for one round. Her allies must remain within 10 feet of her and must be able to both see and hear the divine hunter to gain the benefit. So it's sort of like You know, here, look, here's the opening to shoot in the melee for it. Oh, okay, we'll shoot here. And that, so that's really a unique and very useful gift. So I may seriously consider doing a Divine Hunter Paladin at some point. And that, then you get your extra smite evil. You get your normal channel positive. And here's where we get some more differences. Divine Hunter Bond, upon reaching fifth level, a Divine Hunter forms a Divine Bond with their her ranged weapon as a standard action she can call upon the aid of a celestial spirit for one minute per paladin level at fifth level this spirit grants the weapon a plus one enhancement bonus for every three levels beyond fifth the weapon gains another plus one enhancement bonus to a maximum of plus six at 20th level these bonuses begin added to the weapon stacking existing weapon bonuses to a max of plus five excuse me alternatively they can be used to add any of the following weapons. Axomatic, Brilliant Energy, Flaming, Flaming Burst, Holy, Keen, Merciful, and Speed. Adding these properties consumes an amount of bonus equal to the property's cost. These bonuses are added to any properties the weapon already has, but duplicate are added to any properties the weapon already has, but duplicate abilities do not stack. A pallet can use this ability once per day at 5th level, one additional time per day for every 4 levels beyond 5th, a total of 4 times per day at 17th level. Then at 6th um, level, they get Distant Mercy. A Divine Hunter can expend 2 uses of their Lay on Hands to use Lay on Hands ability at a range instead of uh, within 5 feet per Paladin level. A Paladin can heal wounds of others by touch. With one of these abilities, a Paladin can heal 1d6 points of damage for every two Paladin levels she possesses. Using this ability is a standard action. Alternatively, a Paladin can use this healing power to deal damage to undead creatures, dealing 1d6 points of damage for every two levels the Paladin possesses. Using Lay on Hands in this way requires a successful melee touch and doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity. Undead do not receive a saving throw against this attack, against this damage. So basically, by spending twice as much, they can do it at range, which is good when you're not going to be there in the middle of combat. Then you get, this is just the normal another plus. And then at 11th, you get uh, Hunter's Blessing. A Divine Hunter can expend the use of their Smite Evil as a swift action to grant herself and all allies within 10 feet to deadly aim, precise shot, and improved precise shot feats even if they lack the prerequisite. The effect lasts for one minute. Evil creatures gain no benefit from this ability. So, I mean, deadly aim, precise shot, and improved precise shot for everybody in 10 feet. You got a bunch of archers around you. That is a major bonus. And then you get the ores, which are slightly different. At 8th level, Paladin's immune to blindness, magical otherwise. Each ally within 10 feet gains a plus 4 morale bonus on saving throws against blindness effects. At 17th, you get Aura of Righteousness, which grants the DR5 evil. And then you get the Holy Champion as before. So you lose out on some of the auras. These are your additional uses of Divine Weapon. These are additional pluses for your divine weapon. And this is your righteous hunter. At 14th level, a divine hunter's ranged weapons are treated as good aligned for the purposes of overcoming damage resistance. All ranged attacks made by an ally within 10 feet of them are likewise treated as good aligned for the purposes of overcoming damage. This ability functions only while the divine hunter is conscious. So if you're going to have like two or three archers, Having a Divine Hunter in that group is just 
really useful. So next, let's go on to hosp hospitalier. Hospitaler? I'm horrible at pronouncing it. Palins are known for their charity and for tending to the sick. The hospitalier, hospitalier takes to this calling above all others, spending much of their time healing the poor and giving aid and succor to the those in need. So again, you have your deity selection, you have your paladin proficiencies, you have your alignment restriction. These are pretty much the same as normal paladin, and you still get smite evil. You just get less of it. Excuse me as I take a drink. This is a lot of text. So you still get your aura of courage. You get your mercy. You get your divine grace, your lay on hands, your divine health, and your channel positive energy. And you still get your divine weapon bonds. So there really doesn't look like there's a whole lot of difference here. I'm not sure what the difference is. You get the same divine weapons, you get the same additional uses, same mega feats. Oh, here we are. Aura Resolve. Immune to Charm spells, that's the same. Oh, there are some differences. Hospitals immune to death effects. Each ally within 20 feet of them gains a plus 4 morale bonus on saving throws against death effects. This ability functions only while the paladin is conscious and not if she is unconscious or dead. So immune to charm. Or of faith. Weapons are good aligned. Blah, blah, blah. That's the same. That's the same. That looks like the same. So I'm not really seeing any real differences here, at least in the skills, except that you get less smite. I think, oh, maybe that's the same smite. I don't really see any difference here. So maybe you get more spells. Does your channel positive energy different? Three times per hospital channel's positive energy. Delt is on four plus one for every two. Three times plus charisma modifier. So it looks like you get to use it more often. Oh, okay, that's what it is. The other paladins, you use your lay hands to do positive energy. The hospitalier, you basically get three plus your charisma modifier to do it on top of your lay hands. So that is a huge difference in that you basically get it and still get all your lay hands. So you can heal more. And the only real effect is I think you lose. Yep, you get less smite evils. So, so you're trading smite evils for more curing. I would make that trade in a moment. But that's just me. Divine Guardian. Palins are known for their charity and for tending to the Divine Guardian. Okay, apparently Divine Guardian is broken. So I can't tell you what Divine Guardian does. So, let us go on. And actually, let's read this one and do a hospital tier because... Or Divine Hunter. Let's do hospital tier. Okay, here we are creating our basic paladin. So, we want a charisma of that. We'll put that and that. Basically, the stars are the recommended stats, and usually they're fairly good. And then give the bonus into here. Now, you could go even higher with here. The problem is then your stats here aren't going to be so good. And since your 
basically a tank. I don't think you really want to do that. So, and we want one in religion, so that they're basically bind wounds type skill, and then one in persuasion because why not? And I do recommend as a general tip any of your base skill ones that have the little star if you don't know what else to put a point in put it in one of those because that's a four point jump that, and you never know when the skill would be useful so let's go ahead and go next what did I miss oh I still have more points sorry yeah we want a 16 strength Okay, now for combat abilities, it depends on what you're going to do, but primarily this guy I think is going to be a tank. So I think we will start with, ooh, that's true. You don't get as many feats as a fighter does, so this is more important because normally I would take weapon focus. I think we'll still take weapon those. I think we're going to take toughness. And take weapon focus. And we'll focus in the long sword. Because I believe that Iomide is, uh, their weapon is the uh, long sword. And that makes sense. And these are the only gods that allow lawful good followers. So these are the only ones you can be a paladin of. And this, I mean, this description, the inheritor, light of the sword, lady of valor, this sounds, you know, goddess of righteous valor, justice, and honor. That sounds like a paladin's guard. So let's go ahead and hit next. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And Pius, we'll call him Pete. Pete. And here we can choose any alignment we want as long as it's lawful good because he's a paladin. So there is Pete the Paladin. Basically 16 hit points at first level, plus 4 to hit and damage. Armor class isn't great, but. You can't have everything, but basically can go straight in the heavy armor and uh, be off and running. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a like or a comment. And if you dislike the video, leaving me a dislike is fine, but please leave a comment saying why you dislike the video. As always, this is Spidey1958, and have fun gaming.